or cruiser plane, centric relation, and vertical dimension. A cruiser plane is the one that average plane established by incisors and a cruiser surface of the teeth. Generally, it's not a plane, but represent the planar mean of curvature of these surface. And as you notice in this picture, you can see the occlusal plane is well established for this particular patient, along with this particular patient also. To have an aesthetic reserved and proper function, establishing occlusal plane is one of the critical part to fabricate full mouth reconstruction, including denture. And when the occlusal plane is correctly established, then the aesthetically very pleasing. And as you can see, the occlusal plane should be following the certain reference and it matches pretty well with the patient face. What are the reference to make this correct occlusal plane? In frontal view, the reference for the occlusal plane is interpupillary line, which is connecting to interpupilla. And this occlusal plane should parallel to interpupillary line. The second reference in sagittal plane for the occlusal plane should parallel to campus line or aila to the tragus line. It's called the campus line. The occlusal plane should be parallel to this campus line. And last and third reference. So now we finalize x, y axis and the last z axis. The z axis of occlusal plane, meaning the height of this occlusal plane, are strictly following the functionality and aesthetic view. We used F sound, and when you patient sound F, the lower lip wet line should be lightly touched with maxillary incisor tip, which will be occlusal plane. Okay. 55? 55. That's better. Okay, 55. 55. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. So we got the anterior point. You want to get the plane? To so we are evaluating establishing a cruiser plane and conventionally using the wax rim and this is evaluation of our current occlusal plane in the frontal view and the sagittal view and the height so you need to three dimensionally x y z axis to determine correct occlusal plane Again, in conventional way, when people use the wax rim, you could establish the frontal view or the sagittal view by holding the fox plane like this. And you could see the current condition of wax rim or occlusal plane are slightly tilted. Patient left side is lower. Now on the side view, which is a sagittal plane, you can see whether this occlusal plane is a parallel to campus line, which is Ella Tragus. So that's how you, this is a before adjustment of the wax rim and evaluation of current occlusal plane. So one in the left is before adjusting. You can notice, the, oh, this occlusal plane are too tilted. Compared to 
this is the correct correct occlusal plane now frontal view show parallel to the interpupillary line so make sure when you evaluate the tri indenture your occlusal plane should follow these reference point correctly to be able to make the final denture look pleasing and functionally correct. So this is occlusal plane references that we discussed in XYZ location. Now we're going to talk about the centric relation. In the past, there are many different methods to determine centric relation. Direct check bite, graphic recording, and functional recording, and cephalometric method. Recently, the functional recording and cephalometric method are not being used because of one is not the practically uh, easy to use and separometric is required the radiographic exposure therefore most commonly used centric relation method are either direct check bite or graphic record direct check bite is you need to guide the mandible into the cr position and Either we use a wax ring and bite registration and have them to close it down or if you have a try-in prosthesis, you could use direct check bite, taking bite registration on top of it. And this is an example of showing the wax rim direct check bite. On the other hand, graphic recording method first known as needle point tracing was by Hesse in 1897 and this technique is improved and popularized by the Gysi in 1910 as an intra extra order incisor tracer and many authors use this graphic recording because of visual confirmation is possible whether you make a CR record correctly or no before you dismiss the patient. So let's take a look at how we're going to use the graphic recording. You need to have a centric bearing device. So this is in your issue. And this device allow the force between the maxillary mandibular toward to the center and this is the device to determine and making the graphic record of CR position. This one is closed plate is for the maxilla and one has arch shape. This is for the mandibular arch. We're gonna use the PVS bite registration to making engagement of this tracing device onto dentition. So this is lightly covered with the PVS bite registration and get the slight indentation of maxillary teeth. And for the lower arch, same thing, use the small amount of the PVS bite and then seed it onto the lower teeth. So then making this maxillary mandibular tracing device securely positioned. And we're gonna use the central pin as shown here. And for the graphic recording. Now, this is in the place, so the maxillary mandibular, again, the lower pin, which is a centric pin, will be only point of touching maxillary plate. And this is how it should look like 
when you checking into the patient mouth and patient will move protrusion lateral movement and the other side to make a graphic recording on the plate on the top of the maxillary flat plate when you're doing graphic recording make sure only central pin are touching with between the maxillary mandibular you should not have any side portion are touching together which doesn't allow you to making graphic on the plate so this is we call the gothic arch tracing when you move around the mandibular protrusion and lateral lateral excursion these draw the line on the plate and when you get this three drawing protrusion right side lateral excursion left side lateral excursion this arrow point mark will be centric relation of this patient so protrusion Lateral trusion will finish the gothic arch tracing. And let's take a look at. So first, place on the maxillary plate device in place and mandibular. And relax and have the patient to gently touch. Now move protrusion forward and backward right side backward and the other side and backward once you do that one now on the maxilla you can see there are three arrow mark, three lines is showing on the plate this is called gothic arts tracing one of the graphic recording method when it comes to the edentrous patient, meaning patient doesn't have any teeth, we're going to use the impression tray for the maxilla and impression tray for the mandibular will do this gothic eyes tracing. So this is showing protrusive movement on the edentrous patient. This is right side lateral trusion and this is left side lateral trusion. So these are different graphic drawn on different time. And when you see three different graphic, only accurately done tracing is one in the middle one, which is protrusive and lateral excursive movement. And CR position is right in the arrow points. On the other hand, one in the left side, patient did not move one right side lateral trusion correctly to making fine arrow point. In this case, you need to reinsert it and making new tracing again to be able to make correct gothic eyes tracing. When you look at this right side picture, the act actually arrow had got reversed. It's because instead of patient moving from protrusion and backward, patient lateral movement was induced from the protrusive position and moving jaw to the right and left side instead of off in CR position movement. So when you get the graphic recording, make sure you get the correct graphic record and these are the correctly done as you notice the arrow point will be downward and same thing and this is miniature gothic arch tracing still you'll be able to identify location of a CR position when you notice the arrow mark has a more longer in the central line meaning the lateral excursive movement was not performed from the centric relation position rather 
it was in the random position was the starting point to move to the lateral expressive movement. So be careful not to get it in this graphic recording, whether you need to focus on to making either one of these three graphic recording tracing on the plate. This is for when you have edentrous patient with on the edentrous tray, the tray has a built-in device, meaning impression tray also be used as finding CR position using graphic method. And as you notice, the line this is showing here is a protrusive movement. And once you identify the CR position, this is the CR centric relation position. You could drill it down and making the CR position mark correctly. So protrusive movement and lateral trusion. When it comes to graphic recording, you could have three different methods to register in this plate. And direct check byte, you could check multiply and see, make sure it has a mark. When you're asking open and close more than five times, you should have only one dot showing, which is repeatable and consistent. We call it centric relation. When you check that one and having multiple different mark, that means none of these points are consistent. So you need to repeat the practice. Gothic arch tracing, it's showing as a discussed protrusion, lateral excursion, and identify the arrow mark, which will be the centric relation. And also you could use the short Gothic arch tracing in a patient that hard to reproduce the lat lateral movement. Then you could use a short Gothic tracing, which is only asking protrusive movement, move forward and backward. And the most posterior position, location of the line is centric relation mark. So short gothic, you ask moving forward, backward, moving forward, backward. And that gives you a small line and most posterior ending is the one that centric relation position, CR position mark. And we are going to make a one millimeter dimple, drill it down to the plate so that you could lock in CR position on the tray. Once you drill that dimple one millimeter, then this will have a lower pin will stable in the mouse so now now we got the one millimeter depth dimple on the maxillary plate now intraorally the pin will stay into the cr position instead of sliding so now it's locked into the cr position then we're going to use the pvs fast setting byte registration fill this between the gap maxillary mandibular tray and you wait for the byte registration set then once it's complete you remove the tray maxillary mandibular device and that's how you register centric relation on edentrous patient so to summarize, this is edentrous patient CR registration using the tray. So this is a maxillary tray, mandibular tray. And this is after you take, identify the CR position and took the P 
previous byte registration with it. We have been tested see which method are accurate in our student hands. So 32 ASPIT students and one faculty as a control group and they took three different records using three different methods of centric relation. The wizard is showing as here. When you have a beginner who are taking centric relation, the direct check byte only provide you about 50% of accuracy compared to Gothic arch tracing you could have a 90% accuracy in regarding CR record. So, but for the expert, which is in this case, the faculty member, be able to produce the CR position regardless of the different method is close to the 90% on direct check byte or optic arch tracing method. So for the student, we find out that using the graphic record method produce much more accurate CR position compared to direct check byte method. Vertical dimension of occlusion, after you finding the CR position, now we need to determine one last thing, which is vertical dimension of occlusion. When the patient who need new denture, meaning no present teeth, meaning no vertical stop present when the patient visit. When the patient fully edentrous, there is no vertical stop. That means the dentist need to determine vertical height of face. And we call the vertical dimension of occlusion. When we don't have any reference in terms of the vertical stop, how are we going to find out the proper vertical dimension of occlusion for this particular patient. Most commonly used methods are using vertical dimension of rest. The vertical dimension of rest is a vertical separation of the jaw when the opening and closing muscle of mandible are at rest in tonic contraction. It is the length of the face when the mandible is in physiologic rest position. So basically we ask the patient to gently and relax and touch the lip lightly. And this is the vertical dimension of rest position. And you could ask this position for all edentrous patients. The difference between the vertical dimension of rest and vertical dimension of occlusion, we call free way space are range between two to four millimeter, meaning between the vertical dimension of rest, vertical dimension of occlusion are within two to four millimeter range. And there's always space between these two measurements. We call either freeway space or interocclusal space. The difference between the VDR versus the VDO. These number are freeway space are range are different between class three, which is less than two millimeter, and for the class two jaw relationship, the freeway space is larger than four millimeter, and the class one jaw relationship are range between two to four millimeter. When you miss intercruiser space, meaning is, for example, inadequate intercruiser space, meaning excessive vertical dimension of occlusion. So you made a denture, but the vertical height of the denture are too excessive. Then these are the consequence of excessive vertical dimension of occlusion. Clicking of the teeth, facial distortion, 
intense strain appearance, difficulty closing lip, difficulty swallowing, and soreness and discomfort under the denture, and increased reach resorption due to trauma. So these are happen when you have inadequate intercoarser space. On the other hand, the other side, when you have excessive intercoarser space or inadequate vertical dimension of occlusion, that gives you the reduced intercoarser distance when the teeth are in occlusion. It shows overclosure is potentially damaging to TMJ, and normal tongue space is limited, and of course the facial distortion chin is get closer to the nose and commissure of the lips turn down and lips lose their fullness. Muscle of facial expression lose their tonicity and of course the facial appear flabby look. And angular chylitis is sometimes attributed to overclosure. So these are consequence when you have inadequate vertical dimension of occlusion. How we confirm that we have a proper uh, freeway space? You are checking the closest speaking space. So when the patient speak at sound, which is usually count from 60 to 70, it measure the vertical dimension when the mandible and the muscles involved are in physiologic function of speech. And this allow us to find out whether our vertical dimension of occlusion are properly measured so that when the patient speaking as sound, the either teeth should not be in contact together. Let's say M, 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 we are measuring VDR. Now we're gonna put the denture in. Okay, we're trying this old denture. See what vertical is at. Okay. Okay, by down. Perfect. Perfect. Can you count 60 to 70 really fast? 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. 63, So, why are patients is speaking 60, counting 60 to 70? You notice the teeth are not in contact. That means you provide enough speaking space, meaning freeway space, and it's the vertical dimension was correctly done. When the patient speaking as sound and if the teeth are touching together, that means it's excessive vertical dimension of occlusion. Now, when it comes to the measurement, vertical dimension of working was done on the, your impression taking because now this picture we already saw was impression tray for the maxillary, impression tray for the mandibular, and we identify the CR position, and we took the bite registration to lock into the CR position. Once you're doing that one, we have not studied about the our vertical dimension yet. So, when you took the PBS bite registration and lock into the CR position, this specific height we call the vertical dimension of working. Now, this is the whole device are in the patient mouth. And as you notice, there's a quite excessively open in terms of the vertical dimension. And as we discussed, the vertical dimension of occlusion will be determined from the vertical dimension of rest. Therefore, this is the image of the patient vertical dimension of rest. And how do we find out the correct occlusal dimension of dimension of vertical dimension of occlusion is from the resting position and in the patient jaw relationship is class one. We use average number of three millimeter and from the resting position minus three average 
millimeter, which is a freeway space. This is ideal height of the patient face. Now, when we working, when we took the CR bite, that was a vertical dimension of working height. So we're gonna measure the this height. And when you look at the difference between propose and minus three, which is for the freeway space, minus vertical dimension of working, this is the difference between vertical dimension of difference, which we need to calculate. And then what we're going to do is we are digitally closing vertical dimension from the working minus vertical dimension difference will make you vertical dimension of occlusion. So this is the vertical dimension of rest. And we're going to use the specific ruler in the clinic to measure the vertical dimension of working. And when we measure with the impression tray and byte registration in the mouse, we measure from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin using the ruler and we got the number of 97 for vertical dimension of working. Now the second measurement that you need to do is removing this tray out, maxillary mandibular, impression and the bite should be removed and we ask patient to gently touch the lip or speak M sound and we measure the same position bottom of the nose bottom of the chin and we got the number 97 92 and this is the vertical dimension of rest so therefore the vertical dimension adjustment has to be done in a way vertical dimension of rest was 92 millimeter minus three millimeter if this is the patient has a jaw relationship class one. So regular jaw relationship, use the average number minus three. And so that's become 80, 89 minus 97, which was we measure at the beginning as a vertical dimension of working. And it's give you the minus eight numeric number. That means we know we need to reduce the vertical dimension by eight millimeter. So this is original our working height and this minus eight. This image is ideal patient vertical dimension. And when we set the teeth, we need to use correct vertical dimension of occlusion, which is minus eight millimeter will be implemented when you're doing vertical dimension adjustment. So let's take a look at, this is the vertical dimension of working length. And this is what vertical dimension of rest position that provide you vertical dimension of occlusion difference. So this is how it will be look like when you finally setting the teeth in correct vertical dimension of occlusion. So we discuss about this occlusal plane reference and we also discuss about how we're going to achieve centric record and vertical dimension of adventurous patients.